Welcome to the BVI Navigation Seminar. We are actually departing from uh, what's in Chapter 5 of the Cruising and Cruise Planning class and going to go into a much broader scope and content. The goals of this departure are to provide more specific overview of the navigation in the BVI, uh, provide enough information to participate in this summer's on the water navigation training at Clinton Lake, provide enough information for a crew so that they can understand and can work with navigation equipment and charts, even though they may not have taken more complete navigation courses. And finally, encourage you to take further courses that go in greater depth, such as USPS piloting and USPS advanced piloting. Here are the topics we'll be covering. Uh, they'll actually be broken into several videos and be named part one, part two, part three. And now for a few definitions. Uh, first of all, navigation, the art and science of safely and efficiently directing the movements of a vessel from one point to another. A uh, vessel in this case being a sailboat, and it's important to understand that the skipper of the boat has the moral and legal responsibility of knowing how to navigate and having the proper tools. And in this case, the skipper is the acting captain, basically whoever's uh, guiding the boat at the time, uh, not necessarily the guy who signed all the paperwork. Uh, piloting, navigation using visible references and the depth of water. Uh, that um, means that you're actually going near land somewhere, uh, either inland waters or coastal uh, navigation, uh, because when you're out in the ocean, there are no visible references. Um, dead reckoning, the plotting of a vessel's position using courses and distances from the last known position. Uh, the key words there are last known position. Uh, so if you don't know what your last known position was, uh, then you can't do dead reckoning. And dead reckoning is one of the ways to navigate um, after your uh, GPS died and you're sitting out in the water going, where am I? And the thing that you don't want to have to do is what Captain Ron suggests, just pull over and ask for directions. Uh, lastly, a chart. A chart is a scaled down representation of a water area and some of the adjacent land overlaid with a grid system, uh, which is longitude and latitude. Uh, the important thing here is that a chart, a nautical chart or a marine chart is something different than a map. A uh, map is a map of uh, land uh, and it has altitudes and a variety of other things. Uh, but in the water, it doesn't have uh, indications of rocks. It doesn't have indications of the, the depth of the uh, water, um, those types of uh, pieces of information. Now for some general navigation objectives. Firstly, you want to start your planned voyage at one location and arrive safely at your destination. Notice I use the word planned. While doing that, you want to avoid hazards. You want to get from point A to point B without hitting anything. You want to get into and out of harbors without hitting anything. Keep in mind that navigating a harbor is often different than just getting from point A to B and usually involves more visual references than just following the GPS. This is where cruising and anchorage guides come in. Raising and lowering sails without hitting anything. Uh, raising and lowering sails takes time. You have to point your boat into the wind and power forward while making sure your battens don't foul in the lazy jacks and other such issues. Uh, if you're heading toward a submerged rock or toward land, you may run out of space before you complete your task. Use your charts to make sure you have plenty of time and space. And finally, tacking without hitting anything. On the chart plotter, you have to define a route, but the wind forces you to tack back and forth across that route. You need to define that route to give you the necessary space to tack without hitting anything. 
Uh, lastly, uh, restricted area avoidance. There may be areas that you are required to avoid, such as ferry docks, uh, or in the case of Clinton Lake, nuclear power facilities. Uh, note, there are no numerous navigational items that I'm not covering in this seminar. There are three steps to navigating. First, you plan your voyage. Even if the plan is to randomly sail around, you review your planned area and determine all hazards so you can avoid them. Secondly, you actively navigate. This is often referred to as on the water. Lastly, while you are navigating, you regularly check to make sure you are where you think you are. And note known locations called fixes along the way. It is all too easy to pick the wrong waypoint uh, to navigate to or to have uh, your GPS die without having a last known fix that you can navigate forward from. Checking keeps you from going too far wrong. One of the reasons that the BVI is such a popular place to sail for beginners is there are a number of navigation issues you can largely ignore. Tidal variation is typically less than one foot, uh, but if you figure two feet, you should be fine. Uh, currents are rare, uh, but when they are present, they're uh, three knots or less, and you shouldn't encounter any bridges, locks, or dams. So let's look at traditional, as in paper, charts and tools. Your boat will come with a set of tools for navigation. A likely list is on the left. A picture of the, what a divider is, is in the upper left. And a picture of what a parallel rule, just one form of plotting tool, is at the top middle. Uh, we can teach you how to use these tools in the On the Water seminar this summer. You might want to bring some of your own tools to the BVI as well. And you might want to pause here and look over the lists. So where are the British Virgin Islands? The answer is just a little east of Puerto Rico. And what islands make up the BVI? Pause here and take a look over the map. Yes, this is a map, not a chart. NOAA. The National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration provides a variety of charts for free. There are also many providers of charts, but we're going to go here because they're free. Follow the web address pointed to by the arrow to get to this page. To get a BVI chart, click the link labeled NOAA Raster Navigational Charts. On this page, on the Paper Charts tab, you can search for charts by place names, chart numbers, or launch and latitude. If, it, if you can't find it using Tortola, uh, try searching for Virgin Gorda Island or for a chart number, which would be 25641. Uh, when you click on the chart you want, uh, the right side of the screen will show up. Notice at the bottom right, there are a number of available products. You can download a PDF version or a BC booklet chart version or an RNC raster nautical chart version. For now, I recommend you download the BC version and print it, primarily because it's a convenient print format and it has lots of additional info for you. This is what the full PDF version of the chart looks like. Charts come in a variety of levels of detail. This is known as scale. We will generally be dealing with coastal and harbor levels of detail. This is a close up near the center of our Virgin Islands chart. Notice the inset on the left has a scale of one to 20,000 Whereas the main chart, look at the top blue arrow in the center, has a scale of 1 to 100,000. This means that the objects in the inset are drawn bigger than the ones in the main chart. A couple other things to note while we have this slide up. The lower arrow in the center is showing that the chart depicts depths in fathoms. 
This means that the depth of three, when it's shown on the chart, actually means 18 feet because a fathom is six feet. And if you look on the right uh, lower part where there is a compass rose, you will see that the magnetic variance for this chart is 13 degrees west, meaning that you have to add 13 degrees to any true bearing to convert it to a magnetic bearing. Charts show aids to navigation on them. You won't see many atons in the BVI, but when you do, they are important. Remember the catchphrase, red, right, returning. That means that you should have red markers on your right or starboard side when returning to land or when entering a harbor. Charts use different colors to indicate land versus shallow water versus deep water. They also have lots of symbols. The numbers indicate how deep the hazards are. When I gave you the definition of a chart, I mentioned that charts have a grid overlaying them. For charts that we will be using, that grid is in squares of longitude and latitude. This grid is oriented to something called true north. However, the ship's compass points to magnetic north. Magnetic north is actually a different location than true north and moves at a somewhat predictable rate. The difference between true and magnetic is called a variance. When using paper charts to navigate, conversions between magnetic and true need to be done. So let's take a look at a chart. Here are some latitude lines and down here. These are some longitude lines and over here. Here's some land, more land over here more land up here. Here's some shallower water and some deeper water. And these numbers here, 11, 11, 12, uh, are depth soundings. And they uh, tell you how deep the water is. Uh, keep in mind that 11 actually means 66 feet because a fathom is six feet. This is Road Town Harbor where you'll be starting your journey. And these are some aids to navigation that you'll wanna pay attention to there. Here are lots of rock symbols that you can see. And what I suggest you do is download the PDF or bulk chart versions of this chart and look them over in more detail. We will have a BVI on the water seminar this summer. We'll provide information on how to use dividers and plotter rules on charts. We'll also show you how to define waypoints and routes and then follow them. I encourage you to attend this seminar. Uh, keep in mind that this seminar here, as well as the on the water exercise, barely scratches the surface of navigation. Uh, so I also encourage you to take further courses with the uh, uh, U.S. Power Squadron, including piloting and advanced piloting. This is the end of part one. Watch part two next.